Hi, my name is Dan Fu. In this video, I'll be talking about Flying Squid, a new method for speeding up weak supervision with triplet methods. Modern machine learning models often require lots of label training data to be successful, but collecting all this training data can often be slow and expensive. As a result, practitioners have been turning to weaker forms of supervision, such as user-defined functions, crowd workers, and external knowledge bases to address the training data bottleneck, instead of relying on expensive, high-quality gold labels. These weaker sources of supervision are usually cheaper to obtain, but they can be noisy and conflict with each other. For example, a user-defined function may not cover all edge cases, or crowd workers may produce noisy labels. So a critical challenge in weak supervision is how to best use multiple noisy sources of supervision together. Over the past few years, data programming embodied in systems like Snorkel has emerged as a popular framework for unifying multiple sources of weak supervision. In data programming, each source of weak supervision is modeled through an abstraction called a labeling function. Labeling function take in individual data points and either produce noisy labels or abstain, meaning that they don't vote on those data points. In this slide, we're showing an example of a user trying to detect interviews with Bernie Sanders in a collection of cable TV news videos. They can use the labeling functions to model user-defined heuristics, such as looking for Bernie Sanders' face in a particular frame or checking whether the background is blue. We can even model crowd worker annotations with this framework. The labeling function can return the worker's vote on the data points that the crowd worker processed and abstain on the rest of the data points. Data programming handles these noisy disagreements and abstentions by modeling labeling function behavior and then aggregates the votes to generate probabilistic training labels for a downstream end model. This abstraction has been useful in a number of practitioner use cases from business applications like AI products at Apple and search products at Google to applications in the sciences. And here's a sampling of other users and collaborators for the Snorkel project. Now, modeling labeling function behavior is a key part of this process, but it can be slow. In particular, it requires solving the parameters of a latent graphical model by optimizing a loss function using multiple iterations of stochastic gradient descent. In Flying Squid, we build on techniques from the graphical model literature called the method of moments to speed up this part of the process and reduce overall model turnaround time. To explain how we achieve this with Flying Squid, I'll first give some background on how current weak supervision systems use graphical models to model labeling function behavior. Then I'll explain how we use the method of moments to get a closed form solution to recovering these graphical model parameters instead of using stochastic gradient descent. Next, I'll briefly summarize our theoretical analysis, showing that this method is sometimes information theoretically optimal up to constant factors and learns at asymptotically the same rate as using gold labels. Finally, I'll discuss the evaluation and implications of our technique. Since it doesn't need to run SGD, Flying Squid can run orders of magnitude faster than previous approaches. And surprisingly, we found that we often didn't need to sacrifice accuracy to get these benefits we could often still build high quality models. I'll talk about how this enables exciting new applications like weekly supervised online learning. Let's begin with some background. I'll first describe the formal problem setup. We'll present binary classification tasks for simplicity, but we can handle the multi-class case as well. Check out our paper for more details. We'll start with a collection of unlabeled data and M labeling functions each of which can assign a label to data points, or abstain, here represented by the zero vote. We want to use the votes from these labeling functions to generate probabilistic training labels y hat, which can then be used to train a downstream end model. To do this, we need to learn the joint distribution between labeling function votes and the true labels y without actually observing y. We can get some traction on this problem by modeling it with a latent graphical model like the one shown here. In this formulation, we view labeling function outputs and the true label as random variables, 
some of which are observed and some of which are hidden. For example, this particular graph says that the labeling function outputs are correlated with a hidden true label, but the errors and labeling function outputs are independent of each other. The nice thing about this graphical model formulation is that it's quite flexible. For example, if we note that there are correlations between labeling function outputs, then we can model that dependency. We can also model correlations between different data points. For example, modeling temporal dependencies between neighboring frames in a video. The technical problem then becomes learning the parameters of these graphical models, essentially the weights of the edges in these graphs. With a little bit of work, we can see that the main challenge in particular is estimating the accuracies of the labeling functions. We'll call these accuracy parameters mu. As a side note, for this presentation, we'll assume that the model structure is user provided, but we note that there are methods of estimating the structure directly from labeling function outputs as well. Now let's talk about how we recovered the parameters of these graphical models. Previous approaches solve for the parameters by optimizing a loss function based on the rates of agreement and disagreement between labeling functions. Unfortunately, optimizing this loss function often requires iterations of stochastic gradient descent, which can take a long time and requires tuning many hyperparameters. In Flying Squid, we use a family of techniques from the graphical modeling literature called methods of moments to break the parameter estimation problem down into smaller pieces that can be solved with closed form solutions. In particular, if we solve for parameters of triplets of conditionally independent labeling functions at a time, we can construct a system of equations with analytic solutions. Let's dive into how we solve for these accuracies with a method of moments. We'll take a look at the accuracies mu i and mu j of two labeling functions. These accuracy parameters are highlighted in blue on the left side of this equation. It turns out that by looking at conditional independencies in the graph structure, we can recover the accuracy parameters by looking at the agreement rates between labeling functions, which is this nij variable highlighted in green on the right side of the equation. Now, this agreement rate is just the empirical rate that two labeling functions agree with each other, which is a number that we can compute directly. Formally, this agreement rate can be computed with a second order moment calculation, which is where the method of moments technique gets its name. The only thing we need to do to recover the parameters of the labeling functions from these moment equations is to find triplets of variables where the property holds. And two such triplets are highlighted in yellow and green here. Then we can form a system of equations of three equations with three unknowns and solve for the accuracy parameters directly. All we need to do is count how often the labeling functions agree without optimizing a black box loss function. In practice, this is so fast that we can actually do this calculation for all possible valid triplets and just take a median of the resulting calculations. Now I'll briefly summarize our three main theoretical results. See our paper for more details or come find us at the Q&A session. First, let's look at the error in our parameter estimate. Here's an informal presentation of theorem one from our paper. On the, look, on the left, we're looking at mu hat, which is our estimated accuracy parameters, and mu, the true accuracy parameters. Now the left side of this equation expresses the error in the parameter estimates, which is highlighted in blue. On the right side, we have an expression in the number of unlabeled data points that we performed the parameter recovery procedure on. So theorem one tells us that our sampling error scales in the inverse of the square root of the number of unlabeled data points. The cool thing here is that this rate is actually optimal up to constant factors in some cases. In particular, theorem two in our paper says that the best possible scaling rate with unlabeled data is also the inverse of the square root of the number of unlabeled data points. Furthermore, in the case where all our labeling functions are conditionally independent, and here's an example of, de of a dependency structure where this is the case, we can show that this bound is tight both in n and the number of labeling functions. And as you can see, the lower bound from theorem two matches the upper bound in theorem one, which tells us that our algorithm is optimal up to constant factors. Finally, in our third result, we can bound the generalization error of an N model trained using flying squid. Theorem three states that if you use the estimated parameters mu hat, 
to generate probabilistic training labels, y hat. And then you use those training labels to train an n model with weights w hat. The generalization error of this n model, highlighted in blue on the left, will scale at the rate on the right, which is, again, the inverse of the square root of the number of unlabeled data points. The cool thing about this result is that it's actually the same asymptotic rate as if we were training with ground truth labels the whole time, but without us needing to manually label a bunch of data. Check out our paper for more details and more theoretical results, or ask us about them at the Q&A session. Finally, let's talk evaluation and implications. We evaluated flying squid in terms of speed and accuracy on three benchmark applications and four video analysis tasks. Since we can find the solution to the accuracy parameters directly, instead of slowly stepping towards them with SGD, we can learn the accuracies of the labeling functions orders of magnitude faster than previous approaches, especially on the video analysis applications. You might expect a trade-off between speed and accuracy, but we actually found that we could often achieve the same or better performance as previous approaches. We want to highlight performance on the video tasks in particular. Getting high performance on video tasks requires modeling temporal dependencies, which is why there's such a big gap between the first and second columns here. But these temporal dependencies are precisely what makes the conventional SGD technique slow. With Flying Squid, we can get the high performance of modeling temporal dependencies without paying a high training cost. Since we can train the label model in fractions of a second, we can retrain it within the training loop of an end model. We've released a PyTorch integration that does this exactly, a loss layer like batch norm that runs Flying Squid in the training loop. This means that you can easily incorporate it into your standard training loop. One of the potential applications that we're excited about here is the ability to adapt to distributional drift over time with online learning. As a quick proof of concept, we ran some simple experiments with training Flying Squid on a rolling window of points in the online setting, only looking at the recent points to do parameter recovery instead of using all the points. Here's a synthetic example showing a situation where this can be useful in adapting to distributional drift. You can check out our paper for more details, as well as some additional theoretical results about this use case. So in these graphs, we're showing the accuracy of the probabilistic labels generated by Flying Squid in two situations, one where the data are being drawn from a consistent distribution, and another where the points are being drawn from a distribution that periodically changes. On the left, we have the situation without distribution drift. In blue, we have the performance of the Flying Squid label model trained on a large collection of unlabeled data. In orange, we have the Flying Squid label model trained online over a smaller rolling window of data, in this case, the last 6,000 data points. And in red, we have a majority vote baseline. As you can see, the blue line is mostly above the orange line, which is itself above the red line. But on the right, you can see that this situation changes when you introduce periodic distributional drift into the data. As you can see, the offline model in blue has trouble adapting getting to the highest accuracies, whereas the online model in orange can learn the parameters for the relevant data distribution and achieve high performance. The periodic dips in the orange line are the places where the distributional drift is taking place. There's a momentary dip in quality but then the online model quickly recovers and learns the right parameters for the new distribution. Thank you for listening today. Mei, Fred, and I will all be at the Q&A sessions to answer questions and talk about our work. To summarize, in this video, we talked about how Flying Squid uses a closed form solution to graphical model parameter recovery based on the method of moments. We talked about some of the theoretical properties that we can get with this method, and we saw how Removing SGD from the recovery process allowed us to speed up weak supervision without sacrificing accuracy. We're excited about what this means for applications like weekly supervised online learning. You can find code and more at the links below. Thank you for listening today.